Hi folks, Ray from LoveYourRV.com and today I'm going to pull apart my uh, power center have a look behind see how things are going. Um, I've owned the trailer six years now and haven't really had a look behind that so uh, I'm just going to take it apart and check the wiring make sure nothing's overheating and I don't have any uh, bad connections there. Let's have a closer look here. This is the main distribution for your uh, AC and DC power. Mine is a WF8955 PEC World Friendship Company. <laughs> anyway, that's got your distribution, you got your AC breakers there and your DC fuses. And underneath in there somewhere is the the converter. So first things first I'm going to turn my power off both AC and DC. Let's go do that. Okay that was the AC. Now the DC I have this big uh, switch here disconnect switch so that disconnects the batteries from all my RV circuitry. Okay all power off and cover pulled so, I should give a warning here, if you don't know anything about electricity, this is very uh, unadvisable. Get someone who knows what they're doing, someone that's certified to, to do this job for you. Um, you could end up ruining something, or worst case, burn your RV down, so you've been warned. Looks like on this, there's down here is your converter box. So you can see we got the AC coming down into that through a breaker here on the main panel and it comes out of the other end of that converter box converts AC to DC and looks like up here is where we uh, connect on uh, two terminals there negative and positive um, and then down here this black wire that's the one that's going off to my uh, batteries to charge my batteries Then you got all your uh, distribution for all the the different 12 volt circuits in the rig lights and stuff like that water pump whatever all the different fuses there and I guess we got some indicator lights if, if uh, something fails it'll turn red tell you which brought which circuit has the problem so anyway wiring looks pretty good actually. I don't see anything that's burning or anything like that. What I'm gonna do is take out this whole uh, thing and see what's behind there. I've always been curious to see what's behind. There's one part of the rig I've never explored before. So looks like I've done do all the screws. Try to pull that out. Okay. So that was a lot easier than I thought. Four screws and the whole power center pulls out. Got a lot of uh, Angie hair in there. <laughs> Let's see what we got in the back cavity. Okay, looks like back there we have a bus bar, a bunch of white wire, so that's probably tying all the grounds together. You can see down here, looks like right there, my fingers pointing, this uh, white and black wire am I made in uh, 12 volts. I think they go down into the underbelly and off to the, the front battery compartment. And over here, we have your main AC. I believe the orange wire is my main 30 amp coming in. And then the rest be outputs to different things like air conditioners, anything microwave power on the output there. So I get a vacuum and clean all that hair and debris. There's some leftover stuff from the factory back there. I don't see anything, any rodent problems, which is nice. They can get in there and chew on wires and cause all sorts of problems. 
There we go. Got it cleaned up in there. So what I'm inspecting for in there is I'm checking all the wires, looking for any discoloration, cracking, any signs of uh, rodents chewing on it, any breaks, stuff like that. I'm also going to go through all the connectors here and uh, make sure they're tight. Maybe back them off and retighten them a bit just to make sure they have a solid connection. And also, while I have everything apart here, I'm going to give a good check to see if there's any signs of uh, water getting in anywhere. It's always a good idea while well, we have stuff apart just to make sure you're not getting uh, a leak or anything like that. So, yeah, I'll go through all those wires. And maybe while I have it apart, I'll pull this uh, converter out from here so you guys can see. Because a lot of people... Uh, like to upgrade their converters. The one they use, the WFCO, I think this is 8955, 55 amp uh, converter. Uh, it's not the greatest converter. Some people will upgrade, like for instance, I upgraded uh, to an IntelliPower. I put it all, all the way up front with my battery, where my batteries are, mainly because I didn't want it running about 20 feet of this thinner gauge wiring, having a lot of loss in the wire. Um, this one's fine for when I'm on full hookups. With my solar panels and stuff like that, it hardly even works now. The solar solar keeps my batteries well charged, so this thing hardly has to do anything. But some people might want to upgrade that right at this point, so maybe we'll just pull that out so I can show you how that's hooked up in this arrangement. Okay, so super easy. Just two screws to undo and she slides right out. So overall I'm quite pleased. This is pretty easy to, to take apart and uh, work on. So that's your converter. You can see on this end is your uh, AC power coming in. Got your white and black and green. So if you wanted to swap this out, you could probably put a plug, female plug on this um, right here. And then uh, you could uh, just plug your uh, newer upgraded, say the IntelliPower model, into that. Say you wanted to put an IntelliPower 60 amp like I did. You could just plug it straight in. And on the other end is your uh, 12 volt. You've got your red and uh, your white is an RV. Usually they use white for a ground negative wire. You would just cut that right there and you could... Uh, Put it, screw it on to the IntelliPower. Ron is going to go through, give this a clean up, and I'll check, look for any overheated components on that. And I'm going to pull apart that board just to check for bad soldering on the other side. It's a problem that can happen, especially something has a lot of vibration. You can get uh, crack solder joints, which can cause problems. Maybe clean out that fan while I have it here. So, I cleaned up and inspected that board. I don't see any problems with the soldering on there. No cracked connections or anything looking overheated. So that's good. I don't really recommend anybody going this far unless they have a good background in electronics. I spent a lot, about 25 years working on TVs and stereos and a circuitry just like this, so I kind of know what I'm doing. But uh, you can, uh, things can go awry quickly with electronics, so don't do as I do. Okay, so that's the fan there. Uh, kind of a noisy little fan. Always kind of irritated me that fan, but since I got my solar, I rarely have to hear that fan anymore. Solar works great at keeping the batteries charged. Okay, but anyway, I thought maybe people might want to see what things look like in here, just out of curiosity. Now we can sew her back up. So before I sew that all up, maybe I'll explain a bit how uh, this is a convenient place for a solar install and why a lot of places do it that way. You can see beside here I got the fridge. So if the people are going to put the panels on the roof, they can run the, the panels down the back of the fridge down the fridge vent, easy access in, they don't need to drill any holes. This fridge pulls out with about six screws so you could pull that back 
and behind the fridge you could run the wires down and a lot of them might put say on this wall you might put your solar uh, controller with its display right here and then run the output wires from the controller down they just punch a hole back there and then you've got the 12 volts output of the converter right there so you could wire it in and it would be charging the batteries which is all really simple and easy to do in a quick install but there's a definite drawbacks to that um, one of the biggest is the controller being so far away from the batteries so we'll have the controller up here somewhere going down here you got a good six foot of wiring and then from this we're about not even we're towards the rear of the rig I got I looked at it, it's about 20 feet of uh, this looks like maybe six gauge be six gauge wire so you're gonna lose a lot of energy in that wire start running say 20 amps through that you're gonna have a lot of voltage drop which means you won't have a very efficient uh, you won't be a very efficient solar system the best way to do it is to uh, run your solar panels on the roof into a junction box up there and then maybe run four gauge uh, down to where your batteries are and put your controller there right beside your batteries so the output of the controller only has you know three or four feet instead you'll have a much more efficient system so that's just how I did it a little bit of a tip there especially if you're you're running into someone installing your solar and they do it this way and they're charging you big bucks it might be uh, it might, might not be worth it so let's sew all that back up again So we'll just do a few voltage checks. There's my power coming in, 121.9. Let's check the DC here. 13.5. So yeah, I can go along all those, make sure they uh, they're similar, and throw all my breakers on. I can check on the other side all those breakers turn stuff on there's the microwave water heater and the converter okay looking good put that final cover back on well there's another little preventative maintenance task done I was really happy to see how easy that came out of there easy to work on now I know what's behind there. If anything goes wrong, especially when we're on the road, I'll know exactly where everything is. Um, so I hope you found that interesting, or if you're going to have to do some work on that yourself, at least you'll know what you're faced with. Um, once again, this is a Keystone Cougar 2011. Of course, it's going to be different in a lot of rigs, but from what I've seen, they seem to like to stick that under a lot of the stoves. So, till next time, this is Ray from Love Your RV with my beagle Angie. <laughs> Happy trails everyone. Cheers. <laughs>